Hey guys, you are watching your anime world, how are you all? Please support to subscribe this channel for watching new interesting stories so in this video, we will see what if Deku became the universe's most dangerous anti-hero. Here is short summary, Izuku has turned from a bullied quirkless to the most dangerous person on the planet maybe the universe. See him fight with an almost careless attitude and be the legendary all for one. All for one quirk Izuku, anti-hero Izuku, team 4 star, devil Artemis like personality of Cell Izuku, Izumina. But before we start, if you want more stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. Pain. This what Midoriya Izuku feels now, the process is complete and now he has the greatest power. All for one. He can hardly believe that yesterday, he was nothing but a quirkless child, a group that society saw as dregs. The bullied child finally has the power to make everyone suffer from Kachan to All Might who all said he wouldn't succeed in life. He remember meeting the one who gave him this power. Flashback. All Might. You can't be a hero. Katsuki Bakugo. Maybe if you jump off a building Deku, you will get a quirk in the next life. These are the voices Izuku hears even now. He just was told by his hero All Might that he doesn't have a chance to be a hero. He is walking home, not knowing what to do now is his greatest dream, being a hero, is crushed by two people he used to look up to. How sad to see a youngster be insulted just for what they believe in. A voice behind him says, as Izuku looks behind to see a man in a black suit and bandages on his face. Just from the aura he has, the green-haired child is sweating from his head. Why yeah? IW wanted to be a H hero but now everyone is telling me I have no C chance. Izuku was able to find his voice and just starts telling this stranger everything from his bullying in childhood. Unknown to the quirkless child, the man is using a quirk that makes people tell the truth no matter what. What if I can make you a hero? Society will love you more than anything, all you got to do, is come with me. The man holds at his hand, knowing Izuku's answer. He has seen many quirkless with the same face, all you got to do is show them you can give them a quirk and they'll follow you like a puppy. At another time or place, Izuku would have disagree and leave but this is where the youngster is at his lowest in spirit so he takes his hand and leaves with him. He heard rumors in school with other quirkless students and they heard of someone who had bandage on his face and gives the people quirks, so he saw a chance to be strong and never weak. With this, young Midoriya leaves with the man, while they are leaving Izuku asks his name and he repiles with. All for one. Later, Izuku is in the League of Villains hideout meeting two odd people with Shigaraki a man with hands all over him and Kurogiri a man of dark fog. So this is the new recruit, father brought. Shigaraki says sizing up the kid while scratching his neck, while Kurogiri is silently cleaning a cup that the green-haired kid just finished. Just then the door to the back open, silencing the man-child with all for one appearing. Come child and you will receive a powerful quirk. And so Izuku enter the room seeing a small room with a single chair. Sit child. The kid sits waiting and sees the man right arm start to glow black. Now listen child, the quirk I am giving you is called. Muscle augmentation and it will increase your muscles to the point you can lift buildings at full power. Without any other word, he grabbed Izuku's head and he felt the power start to go to him like receiving a blood transfusion but with the pain of boiling water on his face. What a little fool. Izuku started hearing, why would I give him a powerful quirk when I can just turn him to obedient Nomu? The kid started to panic and began resisting and grabbed all for one's hand and started to feel like he is siphoning out his powers. ARRH. What's happening? All for one feels like all of his quirks are being taken like he did to so many other people. Unknown to anyone even little Midoriya, he has a quirk called, quirk stealing. Similiar to all for one's quirk, he can take quirks through physical contact and he just awakens it after learning the old mon's treachery thanks to one of the quirks. Mind read he just took. All for one was going to turn him to a nomu. A mindless and Izuku was not going to allow that and so he is stealing all of his quirks and he feels like he is getting the biggest power up while all for one is screaming. What are you doing brat? All for one demands. Ha! Ah. Izuku laughs with confidence he never felt and him answering. I just heard your thoughts, I am no and so I am going to take all your quirks for myself. 
Creek Izuku looks ahead of him and behind the old man and sees Shigaraki and Kurogiri breaking the door down and Izuku knows he has to react quickly or they can just grab all for one real fast and take him and so he uses forced activation quirk and sent spikes at the two villains hitting them quickly and so absorbing their quirks through the spikes gaining the decay and warp gate quirks. After the process, the two sidekicks fall down unconscious with all for one trying to stay awake and failing as those quirks were the only thing keeping him alive as he is over 100 years old and without them it's like his life support has died. Izuku walks up to the dying man with happiness as he finally got what he wanted, not just a quirk but mutably quirks with at least a hundred different quirks and all of them belong to him. Why thank you old man, with this, as he holds up his hand which has spikes on it, power. I can basically control all of Japan but why stop there? The entire world could be my Osider. Of course I am going to end both of your little backup dancers snoozing there and you so no one will know the new kingpin in town. The new all for one carrier says condescendly. All for one wasn't angry that a century of work and power was lost to him, that he won't have his final fight with All Might or his successor Tamura is unconscious and will be killed later on. No he was pissed and so he began to scream in utter rage while his organs are beginning to suffer failure. Ah, I cannot die like this. To a middle schooler throwing a tantrum. Without a word, Izuku used his spike covered fist and smash all for one skull in, killing the century old villain. With this, Izuku starts to feel dizzy and realizes his body is trying to adjust with the quirks and so he decides to go to sleep so his body can heal he checks the rest of the hideout and finds a bed and falls asleep. When he wakes up, he will have so many plans to do. Hee <laughs> hee, the green haired child laughs knowing he's done something All Might could never do, kill and humiliate his nemesis. When I wake up there is going to be a new outlaw in town and All Might, the sheriff, will have no chance of arrest. Flashback over, now awakened and rejuvenated he starts to realize that the hideout looks a little dusty, like no one cleaned it in a while, he checks his phone, saw the date and widen his eyes in shock. With a yell he says, what the hell, I wasn't asleep for a day, I was hibernating for a year. Izuku knew that not only a year can have big changes in society but he also realized that he changes well. He found a long mirror and saw his new body. Long green hair that touch his shoulders, dark green skin like a lizard, tall at 6 feet 6, pink pupil eyes, and it seems his body has increased as well. Hem seems like I have the body of a 19 year old with these quirks advancing my structure at 1. Izuku mumbling to himself before flexing his six pack. Ha, but look at me, I am perfect with a capital P. Izuku says while admiring his reflection. He has gained confidence with the all for one quirk and now he feels on top of the world. However, he knows that he can't fight all might as he knows that it took all for one years to master his quirk and he still has a hard time fighting the one for all user. With quirks, he also gained most of all for one's memories and knows that he will need a few more quirks to beat all might also he needs to check current events and so he found a laptop in the hideout and starts researching. Meanwhile in UA, the number one hero was currently preparing for another day of superhero work but was thinking of his successor, Kutra Izumi II, the son of the hero duo Water Hose and nephew of Mandalay of the Wild, Wild Cats, All Might knows that Gran Torino, his old teacher, is currently teaching Kutra how to control one for all better as his intern. All Might choose Kutra out of other people like Mirio, because he saw him as someone who was going to give up on life so he gave the kid a purpose. Plus he did save him from the villain, muscular when he attacked near his school and gave Kutra help in training by cleaning a beach full of trash. Now the kid loves heroes again after helping him but the other reason he chose the kid over Mirio, the future number one hero people are calling him, is because All Might has been arguing with his former sidekick, Sir Nighteye, that the future is not set in stone and people can change events. But Sir Nighteye believes that the future can never be changed and it will be the same due to his quirk foresight he can see the future. Because of this quirk, Nighteye is sure Mirio will be the next and best one for all user as that is what he saw in his vision. All Might made Kutra his successor because he not only wanted to help the kid but to prove his former sidekick that events can change and so far, he seems right as Kutra has been doing well in UA. Even made it in UA. Sports festival in third place only being beaten by Todoroki and Bakugo respectively both of whom were tough themselves. 
Before he goes out to town he sees Shota Aizawa, the teacher of class 1A, looking at papers and decides to greet him. Well greetings Aizawa-san, the hero says with his usual smile, and how are you on this fine day? Aizawa turns around and looks at him with his dry eyes. Hello Yagi-san, just looking at my class's test scores and it seems that they are improving but a few like Kaminari and Ishido are at the bottom of scores and they may need a tutor if they hope to improve. The hero Eraserhead says before going back to his test scores. The hero then replies, well then, fellow teacher, I wish you a fine day and farewell for now. And just like that he transforms to his muscle form and goes on patrol as he is running around he also tries to find anything on all for one as he seemed to have disappeared and he can't help but be suspicious if he has a plan in waiting. Back at the villain hideout i.e. Izuku's hideout. Izuku has just finished his research by looking up the UA Sports Festival and other events, so far he has seen many tough future heroes, before he transformed, he would have gone complete quirk fanboy but now he is studying them like a predator watching their prey and begins to think out loud. Hum, many of them are tough but the ones I should be careful of are the top three of the festival. He said while looking at the ranking of the heroes. First Katsuki Bakugo, second Shoto Todoroki. Third Kutra Izumi. Kachan. Quirk Explosion. His former childhood friend and bully should have been happy that he won as it would inflate his ego and show people his powers but the odd thing in Izuku's mind was when he was to make a speech at the start of the festival. Just letting you all know, I am going to win and beat these extras. But I am also winning for my best friend, who has been missing for a year, the no, Midoriya Izuku. Come back Izuku. Your mom has been crying non-stop you be tarred. Izuku doesn't know if this is a way to get sympathy points from hero agencies or he is actually sorry but he puts that in the back of his mind and continues on his list. Next is Shoto Todoroki, Quirk Ice and Fire, the son of the flame and number two hero, Endeavor. His fight with Kutra seemed to have changed him as from records, he only uses his ice powers but started using fire powers in his fight to win. Making him more of a threat. Lastly and more importantly is Kutra Izumi, Quirk officially water but an officially one for all. Thanks to all for one's memories, he knows that the Quirk can pass down from user to user and this 12 year old seems to be the next user. The records seem to say that the only reason he was accepted to UA at the age of 12 was the Wild, Wild Cats team all recommended him and passed the recommendation test. Right now, Izuku needs two quirks to absorb if he wants to beat All Might and the Class 1A students. The first is guarded at the Yaoyoro's-ru mansion and the second is Sir Nightai's eyesight and right now Sir Nightai himself is at his agency also the hero office is close to the mansion so if he invades the place, they may come and Nightai may be one of them. Okay, I have the targets and the place but I need a disguise as with Kachan's speech. The police search for me has increased and there are posters of me all around the city and I still have the face of my old self so I should at least get a mask. With that Izuku leaves goes to the locker room full of outfits and finds all for one's black suit and mask and decides to wear that for now. I'll work on original costume later, at least the attack will be blame on the old fart and I can train the quirks. With that he puts on the suit and mask and uses the warp gate quirk to create a portal near the mansion before he goes in he feels nervous as this will be his first crime he has ever done in his life so he hypes himself to feel better. I have to get stronger and I must win, if I don't they may just get rid of my quirk and I'll be the quirkless loser again. No, I can win this, I will show them my maximum power. And with adrenaline he charges at the portal, ready to suck and get some new powers. The Yaoyorozu family this family of three is the richest family in the world as they have gotten most of their money from stock markets and any investment they made has multiplied in quality and eventually worked on real estate and construction which made them billionaires. No one knows how they won so much money as none of their quirks deal with the future and so they kept the money and it's said they bribe heroes to arrest, criminals, who just so happen to be the family's competitors and they have hero agencies on their payroll. The family is practically untouchable as the mansion is full of hero bodyguards with the palace having at least a thousand rooms. The family is Jack, the father, Jill, the mother, and Momo, the heiress. With the gear of all for one, Izuku has landed in the middle of the Yaoyorozu front courtyard and it was massive. Whoa, this mansion is like the Erdogan Grand Palace in Turkey. 
He then closes his mouth as he knows that it's illegal to be in the mansion and he doesn't have his voice filter on. He starts working on the filter in the all for one helmet. Let's see the old man's voice was deep so somewhere around this. Yep, this is definitely his voice. Like he's cosplaying Darth Vader. With this, he can impersonate the deceased super villain but he needs to get the quirk in the mansion as from all for one's memories, it is definitely important but odd considering where it is. Flashback. Six years ago, I am Shinbin Kisha, one reporting here at Yaoyorozu Mansion as a meteorite has crashed right on their lawn and now they are claiming it is their property. I am right here with Jack Yaoyorozu. Yaoyorozu san could you explain why you want to keep this meteor as shouldn't the government be allowed to study it? The black-haired middle-aged man repiles, this meteor has landed on my property and I can claim it is my own. Don't worry I will donate a large piece to our fine government but the majority will be kept in my estate. With that the man leaves the reporter and has the meteor lifted thanks to a crane. Well there you have it, Yaoyorozu san has said his story and we will get an answer from the diet real soon, back to you at the office. A non-injured all for one looks at the news looking at the meteor and notices a strong aura around the outer space rock. Something is inside it and is powerful but he can't go after it yet as he needs to deal with Nanashimura's successor of one for all first. Plus he already knows what the diet will say without waiting for the news, the entire government is on the family's payroll that people are calling them, the unofficially imperial family. However, he would be injured during his fight with All Might and focus on healing but his investigation did say the meteor is in the basement of the mansion. Present day, with that, Izuku snaps out of the flashback and decides how to begin the assault, with a roar he shouts, kinetic booster. This quirk increases his kinetic energy and then raises his hand and with another shout, extreme air cannon, he sends a large gust of wind that destroys the east wing of the mansion. Thanks to the blueprints and all for one's memories, he knows the hatch to the basement is in this wing. He also sees a few hero bodyguards and Jill Yaoyorozu hit by the blast and injured but he doesn't care about them and focuses on looking for the hatch. Hey you villain, Izuku hears a yell, then moves away as a wind blast almost hit him. He looks at the direction the blast came from and sees an unharmed high school student with a brown armor-like outfit with the signature hat of the hero school, Shikatsu Hai. I am the wind hero, Gale Force. Prepare villain, as I won't let you hurt the this family. The teen yells with passion as he creates a whirlwind and hits Izuku with full force. The wind sends the disguised villain into the west wing and crashing into walls. OW, that hurt, a little. He jokes as he gets up and remove the rubble from his suit. Ah, Izuku hears a hypersonic yell and causes him to go on his knees in pain. He sees the number 10 hero, Gang Orca and the whale hero charges at the downed villain but he creates spikes from his arms and stabs him. It's a good thing we are not near any water, otherwise I be endangered. Izuku says as he know Gang Orca is better in underwater combat due to his whale physiology. However, the whale hero jumps straight at Izuku and opens his toothed mouth and is about to bite him. I will defeat you all for one. Shouts Gang Orca however Izuku uses another quirk, density control, once the whale hero bites the disguised villain's shoulder. It feels like he is trying to eat the toughest metal and his teeth even breaks. As his mouth is bleeding and without warning, Izuku punches Gang Orca, Suffer Whale Boy, 24,000 pound punch. It was like the green skinned teen's arm was hardened and the punch knocks out the number 10 hero. He goes invisible as he hears footsteps and sees Gale Force. Master, the wind user runs to his mentor to check on him but while he is checking on him, he gets neck chopped by the invisible villain and knock unconscious. Izuku then reappears and decides to steal their quirks. He goes back the destroyed east wing and searches for the hatch. He also sees Mrs. Yaoyorozu and decides to heal her injuries but steals her quirk, teleportation she can teleport inanimate objects. Meanwhile at Sir Nidai, S Hero Agency. Within the agency, Sir Nidai and Mirio Tagata are talking to each other in his office. Both are talking about the new one for all user, Kutra Izumi. Sir Nidai, I don't care I won't get one for all. I am happy being just who am, a hero my own way. Mirio says with a smile, while Nidai is more annoyed than happy. Tagata, a child is supposed to be the next symbol of peace. 
This is a joke I would never laugh at. We need to convince All Might that you are the next number one hero and get Izumi to give you the quirk. As they are talking, the former sidekick of All Might's phone rings and he answers it. Hello. Night Eye it's Jack, someone is attacking my house and I think my wife is injured. The caller is his old friend Jack Yaoyorozu and instead of the calm voice he's known for years, it's a voice of despair. Listen Jack, I will go to your house. Tell me where are you right now? Night Eye yells as he cares for his friend, he gives a hand signal to Mirio, telling him to get his hero uniform ready with Mirio running to his locker. I am at my basement and I think they found the hatch. Please old friend, I am begging you. Hell, the phone call ends and Night Eye gets his suit while Mirio enters with his Lemillion outfit. Night Eye then gives Mirio a hard glare. Mirio, go get the intern maybe her acid quirk could help this situation. You got it boss. Mirio then walks out of the office and sees the new intern, ah. Greetings Ashido-san we have a job for you. Seriously, that's awesome. I am going on my first real hero mission. The pink-skinned high schooler. Mina Ishido says with excitement and cheer. The Yaoyorozu Basement Jack Yaoyorozu was a man that liked to be in control, whether it was choosing what school his daughter goes to, what dress his wife wears, how to spend his money, or a person's fate if they tried stealing from him. Either way, he loved control but when something doesn't go in his favor, he starts freaking out as this situation is an example. When a giant explosion hit his mansion, he was only concerned with himself and the meteor so he barricaded the basement and hoped the heroes would deal with the intruders. His daughter was at UA and he saw his wife injured from the blast but he cared for neither as the meteor was his only precious. When he sees the mask of all for one enter the basement and looks at the billionaire, it breaks Jack with sheer despair. P please a all for one sama, please spare me. I don't want to die. Awa. He starts crying and begging and Izuku was amazed with this man's cowardice. He just entered the basement and immediately this billionaire is groveling on the floor. At least when I was young, I was scared of Kachan but I would stand up to him. Izuku thinks to himself but then decides to talk to him as all for one. Answer this question and I may let you live. Why did you keep the meteor instead of giving it to the government all those years? The aura that came from the meteor was enticing and I wanted it for myself. Sometimes if I am having a slow day I would stay in the basement for hours and just let the warmness of the rock just surround me. The billionaire answers while finding a way to distract the villain and attack him with his quirk, obsidian can transform his entire body into obsidian metal. Then show me the rock and I'll let you live, says Izuku with intent to injure him if he tries a trick. Of course, follow me. Jack says as he shows him to a lock room as he unlocks it with his key. With that the disguised villain sees the 10-foot meteor and notices the energy it's giving and there is something inside the meteor, so he gets closer with Jack behind him and he uses his quirk with his skin turning deep black and charges at all for one. Strength Enhancer His physical strength increases and then, diamond body. With this, his body is in case in diamonds. He blocks the first punch and begins punching him but Jack withstands the punch and punches back. They begin punching each other and even though Obsidian is sharper than Diamond, thanks to the strength enhancer he is breaking his arms. Muscle Augmentation It amplify his muscles and it ends with Izuku punching Jack in the chest and breaking his Obsidian body. With that he falls to the ground unconscious. He then summon the spikes and absorbs the Obsidian quirk. Hum, so this is how your daughter has the creation quirk. Your metal quirk and your wife's teleportation can act as a summon thus creating a creation quirk. Izuku begins mumbling as he spits out some blood but refocuses on the situation. He gets closer to the meteor and sees something quite interesting. There is a body in the meteor. The male seems to be human, only with a monkey tail on him and around 8 feet with huge muscles. Izuku puts his hand of the ice and reads the mind of the man. He is dead but I can see the memories of even the deceased thanks to the quirk memory view. I'll view this person's life as I am sure this could be an alien and viewing his memories may give me a view of his powers. Let's see, his name is. Brawley. Brawley's memories. Decades ago, new planet Vegeta. Kakarot. A scream louder than any hurricane or tidal wave can be heard for Izuku as he sees the savage fighter, Brawley beating the hell out of these warriors. 
The all for one user has watched Brawly's memories and past and Izuku can honestly say that he fears his power and if he came to his planet he could kill All Might and any hero or villain with ease. He is glad he died somehow. Brawly was born with energy that surpass any other of his species, the Saiyans. He saw the king try to kill the baby but it failed and even survived a planet's destruction. Since then, his father Paragus has turned his son into a mindless beast with no care for others. The green-haired kid was pretty happy that he got to see worst father in the galaxy get crushed by his son. Holy crap, he definitely succeeded in creating a devil. Izuku thinks to himself as Brawly headbutts Piccolo and clothesline trunks and Gohan without mercy. These people are trying all of their powers but it's having no effect. The one that caused Brawly's psychotic episodes is Kakarot, now named Goku is definitely in pain. Although, the reason Brawly went insane was pretty dumb. Seriously you go crazy because you heard a baby cry is a terrible backstory. Izuku think again, hmm. Seems like Goku, the moron is trying something besides charge at the green giant. He may need to hurry, that comet is going to hit the planet. Let's see what he has planned next. Everyone, I am going to use the spirit bomb. Give me your energy and we can defeat Brawly. Goku says with a grin as he raises his hands. His friend's reaction and Izuku's thought on each one. Piccolo, green slug guy, Goku you need to hurry. He is getting stronger the longer he is in this Super Saiyan form. Vegeta, guy with the largest widow's peak Izuku has ever seen, please. The spirit bomb has never killed anyone. I am the best example. Gohan, daddy's boy that whines too much, I trust my dad. He can win. Take my energy dad. Krillin, loser that makes Izuku's old self seem like a movie star by comparison, if it means we can win and get off this planet, then I am all for the spirit bomb. Trunks, guy that was Brawly's bottom bitch during their fight, I know that if we beat this monster then Cell can be defeated as well. Everyone but Vegeta raises their hands and gives him their energy. He seems to be arguing himself with him ending with a yell. Ah, damn it Kakarot. You better kill him or I'll haunt you when we are in hell. With that he raises his hands as well and gives him his energy. The giant ball above Goku's head is getting bigger but it looks like Brawly is about to charge however a shout seems to give the giant pause. Brawly, how dare you kill me, your own father. Paragus, the person that was supposed to be dead appears in front of Brawly and confuses him, as does Izuku. Wait, where is the pig? The old man is unconscious over there so could it be. Brawly starts glaring at Paragus with the father starting to freak out. Ah, this was a terrible idea. He transforms to reveal the pig and Goku's spirit bomb is complete. Get down Oolong. Goku says with a yell as he throws it with the pig doing just that. Brawly has no chance to dodge and gets hit with the ball and heads straight to Comet, then. End of flashback. Yaoyorozu basement. Ah. Izuku feels pain on his back and kneels to the ground as he is forced out of the flashback. He touches his back and feels a liquid and a burning sensation. Wait is this acid? He thinks to himself as he looks behind him and sees Sir Night Eye checking Jack to see if he is alright. Meanwhile, he spots a blonde with the number million on his costume looking ready to fight him and a beautiful girl that looks to be around his age. Her pink skin with cute raccoon reminds him of a princess from another planet but there is something familiar about her. All for one, surrender now and maybe you will get a lighter sentence. Shouts the as he charges at Izuku however he is prepared. He jumps to the air, luckily the roof is 10 feet, and uses the density quirk. Eat this boy, 10,000 pound slam. The new weight makes his fall faster and with this weight, it would rupture a person's organs but as he get closer, the kid doesn't looks to be stopping. If anything he is running faster and then he goes through Izuku's body and then he turns around and punches him in the back of the head. Crack. He drops to the ground. Damn it. He broke the back of my helmet. Midoriya thinks to himself as he gets up with Night Eye giving him a smug look. Mirio is my greatest student and I personally trained him to break granite. He should have been the one for all user and can still be once we turn you in. Ashido stand back and observe as we win this fight. He walks to the fight with Mina shocked that her teacher wants her to do nothing. But teacher, it would be better if. Ashido, Night Eye shouts as he interrupt her, that is an order. You are to stand there now. 
he says with force as she looks down and watches the fight. You should teach and respect both your students, not favor one from the other. Izuku says with his all for one voice as he thinks to himself. Good thing the voice filter still works. Shut it. Why should I take advice from a freak like you? Night Eye yells as he throws his stamped seals but the all for one user dodges the seals but Mirio kicks his feet and sidesteps with him about to hit the floor but he grabs the floor first to a handstand, kicks Togata and backflips to his feet. However before he can continue the fight, he goes Mina first with her being scared that she is about to get hit but all he does is tap her forehead. A princess like you should not see this. Before she reply, he uses Jill's quirk teleportation and sends her out of the basement and into the destroyed mansion. There now I can go out. He says as he doesn't want her to get hurt for some reason. Air cannon whirlwind combination attack, hurricane hell. A few miles from the mansion. All Might is running to the Yaoyorozu mansion after hearing about a explosion there. He starts to shivers a bit and senses something at the mansion. Is that all for one? He learned to sense the all for one quirk and so he runs faster. Within the destroyed mansion, Mina Ishido just landed on the destroyed mansion, surprised that all for one, the most wanted villain in Japanese history, just took her away from the battle. But she isn't angry as she feels weird that it feels like she meet the villain somewhere years ago and the green hair that came out of his helmet reminded her of someone. Plus she has not liked Sir Night Eye since working at his agency, as he hasn't trained her at all and his sidekicks Bubble Girl and Centipeter have said that he has focus on Mirio since he joined them and neglected their training as well. He clearly was trying to train him for something and get something called one for all was it. At least Mirio was nice and didn't know about the favoritism. Suddenly the ground began shaking and out came a hurricane out of the ground with Night Eye and Mirio flying out and landing hard to the ground. All for one jumps and lands on the ground with ease. He goes to check the two to see if they're alive however Mina yells without thinking, Hey! How come you teleported me away and not get hit by your attack? Midoriya looks at her and answers. I didn't want to see you hurt. I want that man to pay and taking his quirk is the perfect punishment. Thanks to Mr. Yaoyorozu's memories, I know his greatest crime. Mirio looks confused and Night Eye's eyes pop out as he is shocked that someone knows his secret. But Midoriya begins to shake as he senses all might. I was right, due to the connection between both quirks, the users can sense and notice each other but they have to be close. Maybe a mile or two. Wait, Lemillion says. What did the Yaoyorozu family and Night Eye for you to attack them? Night Eye tries to get up but his left leg is broken due to landing on it from the fall. Mirio, do not listen to him. He is a liar and thief. He yells out trying to convince him to not listen. He is the one that helped this family become the billionaires everyone knows them to be. He uses his quirk and some trigger to know future lottery numbers and stock market values. He also arrests people that are the family's competitors in exchange for a percent of the cut and also haven't you noticed that most of the criminals and villains you defeat just so happen to have mutant quirks and he was a member of the creature rejection clan, an anti-mutant quirk group. I know that you were jealous that you weren't given one for all and wanted to make Tagata over there get one for all. You're right you monster, my plan was to let Tagata be the one for all user. Then he would be killed by those mutant freaks and I would be the next user by making him loyal to me and me alone with him giving me one for all before he dies. Night Eye says with madness in his eyes. Wait, what about Bubble Girl and Centipeter? Is that why you ignore all three of us? Mina shouts with anger as he grabs his shirt and interrogate him with Midoriya answering for him. The plan was for Mirio to die when he became the number one hero and the mutant sidekicks were going to be scapegoats and blamed and then anti-mutant quirk sentiment would increase. The Yaoyorozu family knew this plan and endorse it but I don't know if your classmate Momo knew this plan. He quickly adds as she looks shocked and betrayed as he doesn't want her to distrust her classmate. Night Eye seems to be start talking. Unknown to him was that Mina had her phone out and started live streaming shortly before Izuku explains Night Eye's plan. I was supposed to be number one hero and instead all I was the sidekick. Well not anymore, I would hold those two like leashes and when the time came, Mirio would be the number one hero and his death would rally everyone against the mutants due to my sidekicks attacking him. Izuku continues, he would no doubt have someone that has a mind control quirk and make them carry the deed. 
The deranged hero answers by looking away from Nerio, who was shocked that his teacher would do this. He closes his and without warning, punches Night Eye knocking him out. Go, if you take his quirk will you not hurt any more people? He says hoping to negotiate and cause no more fighting. Very well, I promise to not fight and leave for today. He says as he walks to the ruined hero as thanks to Ashido, now everyone knows All Might's former sidekick's plan and now people are starting to cheer for All for one to make him pay. Tagata steps aside as he agrees with this. He grabs Night Eye's head and begins absorbing Night Eye's quirk, Foresight. He senses something on his right side and uses Diamond and Density quirk straight to his body. Ultimate defense, that will be this new move. He thinks as he feels a punch straight to his face. Detroit Smash the All for One helmet begins breaking and the force causes Izuku to go flying straight forward and since Mina was right behind him gets hit and flying with him. Luckily he uses the density quirk at the last second to soften his body and so Pinky didn't get hurt that much. The two however are flying with Izuku using the warp gate quirk to create a black portal, taking away both of them and away from the mansion. Have number fear, because I'm here. All Might shouts his catchphrase and normally that would cheer people up but all there was, is that there is only Mirio standing and a number of heroes unconscious or injured. What happened? He can't help but asks with Mirio looking at him and just saying with a tired smile. It's a long story. Within Izuku's hideout, the two were landing out of the portal with Midoriya losing the broken all for one helmet, with his face being shown. Mina is dazed but the second she sees the thought to be symbol of evil's real face, she starts to tear up. Izuku is that you, he looks at her but now he starts to remember now. Mina, he starts to cry as well. They look at each other and then hug immediately as they speak together as one. I miss you. Bigotry within quirk society when quirks first appear a century ago, the quirk users were looked down upon and even religions and governments saw them as demons and monsters. But over time the quirkless became the minority and quirk users became the majority after a decade or two. Quirkless were then abused and look on as useless in society. The bullying and abuse has caused many quirkless to commit suicide before graduating high school and even if they graduate they get a hard time getting jobs as the offices want people with quirks and not people without any powers. The only jobs they have gotten are police and even the police has been deemed useless since heroes does their jobs are just house husband or wife. A number of quirk types have also been looked down upon, either mutant quirk users being, freaks, or quirks dealing with blood or mind control as future villain scum. Flashback Izuku age 6 Izuku has always gone through a tough life despite being young. When he was labeled quirkless, a number of classmates bullied him and even the teachers did nothing as they to saw him as useless to help. Such as right now at the start of elementary school, where Izuku was being pushed by Kachan, his former best friend and two other bullies, a child with wings and another. Give it up Deku, stop saying you can be a hero. Bakugo yells at him while some people are taking a sick delight in this display. Haha, look at Deku. One of the students says with a smile. Honestly that child should just give up. A teacher says. It just shows how quirkless brats should be put in their place. Another teacher replies to the other one. While the two bullies are happy with the attention, Katsuki is shocked that adults are fine with this and encourage these actions. Damn it Deku, stop it and stay down. The explosion user thinks to himself as the green haired child gets back up with fear but also Dieter Mansion in his eyes. If fi give you up now. H. How can look at M. Myself in the mirror. He stutters as he looks at Bakugo and then at the teachers. Why you all can say I am weak or you useless, but at least I am not a W. Worthless adult whose O only turn on S seems to be watching kids fight. Izuku says as the two teachers' smug look turns to a frown at the insult, and before they can yell at Midoriya, they hear someone yell. Hey, don't hurt him, you bullies. A girl around the Izuku and Katsuki's age walk to the playground and get in front of the two as she glares at Bakugo. She is pink-skinned, raccoon eyes, and small horns that Izuku finds cute. Shut up trash, you and Deku can share the same grave. The winged child flies straight at her but Izuku gets right in front, ready to protect her when. Ring ring, alright kids recess is over, come on in. 
The teachers yells out before glaring at the child that insult him as everyone decides to go back in but Katsuki stays for a bit to tell the two something. You better watch out raccoon eyes. Don't screw with me. Yelling that he walks back inside while the pair walks back they talk. H hey nice to meet T my name is Izuku M Midoriya. He says with his usual scared look but she mistakes the voice for something else. Hey no need to be scared. I am Mina Ishido you don't have to hang out with me if you don't like my looks. She says as growing up, her family was harassed by the creature rejection clan until pro heroes arrest and stop them but she saw her quirk and appearance as ugly due to her upbringing. And no, Izuku says with a shout that surprises her. Why you are the most pretty girl I have ever met. My name is Izuku Midoriya, nice to meet you. The compliant makes the pink skinned girl blush a darker pink. Since then they became best friends. Whenever one is bullied the other one would be there and protect them. It caused a lot of problems as a number of bullies try to harass and a number of kids was injured either from acid wounds or bruises from rocks that Izuku throw at them. A few years later Izuku aged 12. They cared for each other so much and worked together the entire elementary school years. They went together on movies to carnivals and even their parents hang out with each other. Mina's parents even gave Izuku their blessing to be with Mina, much to their embarrassment. However at the start middle school, a series of events change Izuku. Wait you are moving, Midoriya asks with shock and sadness. Sniff I am sorry Izuku, my father got promoted and we are being transferred to another city. I'm going to miss you, Mina says with tears in her eyes. Don't worry about me, I am going to miss you too. Hey. He says as he gives her a necklace in the shape of half a pink heart. I made this to give you and I am holding the other half. This way, even if it is years until we see each other we will still remember all the times we hang out together. He holds up a green half heart. Izuku, we knew each other for years and I have fallen in love with you. Pinky says as she keys him. When we get older, can we get married? Of course these necklaces can be our wedding oaths. I will see you again, even if it's months or years I will remember you. The kind kid says as his new fiancé gets into her family's car and move away, only to see each other many years from now. It saddens him that the girl he loves leaves the city and may never see each other again. When he returns home, he is happy as his father Hisashi is returning home after working abroad for a while but the happiness turns to confusion as his mother Inko is crying with her phone on the ground. Mommy. What's the problem? Is daddy not coming today? However that makes her cry more. All she did was hug her child with tears in her eyes. Baby, daddy is not coming home anymore. He was in an incident. Izuku would later find out that his dad's car crash and he would die with the car blowing up with him inside. With his love gone and his father as well, it broke him and the green-haired child resorted back to his shy self and was bullied once more. Flashback and Izuku age 15. Inside Izuku's hideout, the two reunited lovers stare at their necklaces reconnected to show a single heart and happy they reunite after years away from each other. I can't believe it's been three years since we last saw each other. Izuku says still wearing the all for one suit while Mina is in her hero outfit sitting together, sharing a drink together. Tell me about it, it feels just like yesterday we went to that movie as our last date. What was it again? Ashido says and asks. Um, Radman I believe. That's right. Man I miss you and so do mom and dad. They used to call you little cinnamon roll. Funny pinky anyway, how's you eh? Everyone is nice, got to make friends and I am sure Momo didn't know about her dad racism cause she would hang out with me and sue you. But it's Katsuki that is weird. He tell everyone there that he will beat them all and become the number one hero but every time I mention your name he gets a guilty look like he is sad that you disappear. However while she is talking Izuku looks at the clock and notices the time and talks. I am afraid that this reunion is going to be cut short. Your teachers and classmates at UA will investigate your disappearance at the mansion and they may find the hideout soon. Izuku, what happened to you? You're dress up like the most wanted villain in Japanese history and you attack a mansion with no mercy. Mina is happy that she reunites with her boyfriend but her hero instincts are telling her to be careful. When All Might told me I can't be a hero, 
It felt like all the time I study and training amounted to nothing and now all I want to do is make all of his hero work go to crap and ruin him. Midoriya says as he glares just thinking about the number one hero. Izu you can't be villain of evil and hurt so many people. The pink skinned student says trying to convince her love. You expect me to just let the people who bullied us go and live their lives. They should suffer. I am not saying that but do you believe that the League of Villains will help the Quirkless? Just then, Izuku's realizes that even if he recruits villains by pretending to be all for one they will abuse and hurt the helpless. That is why he wants revenge on All Might, if he beats him then he will control Japan and force equality on society. Okay Mina here, he hands his girlfriend a piece of paper and she notices a address and time on it. This is an abandoned warehouse near UA and that time is when I'll be there and we can meet. Once we meet I'll use my warp gate and teleport us back to this hideout. Listen you remind me that I want to help and create a equal Japan where people are not treated based on what powers they do or don't have. Izu I promise that I won't tell anyone where this is. I don't want to lose you again but you must not lose your kindness. You may have changed your appearance but you are the same even after all these years. Hey maybe you can tutor me cause I am falling behind on my studies. She says as she scratches her head with embarrassment. All Midoriya does a smile as he keys his love and creates a warp gate near UA. Of course Mina my love I'll tutor you and you will be the smartest in class 1A. See you tomorrow. With that she walks to the gate and leaves the hideout. After that he cleans their drink and sits with his laptop on. What should I do now? Mina was right. I can't use villains to defeat All Might and I can't be a villain. But seeing Mina also reminded me of my father's death. Even now. I find it odd that my dad died despite there was a number of heroes around the crash. I'll investigate and find out what happened. With that thought, he uses his laptop and begins studying the car crash. The holder of all for one has a new goal now, find out what happened to his father and create a plan to help the quirkless and create a society of equality. All for one the name of the quirk and user of said power. The quirk has the ability to steal give, or just use other quirks with the same or even more efficiency. As such, he has been labeled SS class villain, the highest rank in history. One of the interesting fact is he can take mutation quirks even if the user has died. The exact number of quirks he has taken is unknown but due to his age and known battles, the number could be in the thousands. Known around the world as the most wanted villain in human history, his past is shrouded in mystery. As many instigators and intelligent heroes have tried to solve the puzzle but all that is known is that he used to have a sister that he gave a power that will soon be the one for all quirk. Along with that, he destroyed an entire city and eventually ruled the criminal underground in less than a year. Many one for all users have tried to beat the symbol of evil but have either been killed or injured beyond repair only for the eighth user, all might to be the one to win. After the Yaoyorozu assault, the family that was the richest in the world is now disgraced with the public demanding the family's arrest. Momo was declared innocent by investigators and was released but her mother and father were not so lucky and they are being taken to prison. Momo, Momo, come back here and help your father. Jack Yaoyorozu shouts out in his holding cell, wanting his daughter to do something and help him while her mother Jill is sitting and accepting her fate, prison. No father I am not doing it. As all she says as she leaves but she can hear her father's shouting. Momo, you better get back here you worthless brat now. He shouts as he tries to use his quirk to break the bars but he can't. My quirk, what happened to it? She can't believe that this is the end of her family and yet she knew it was a matter of time. The creation girl remembers all the times her parents would say how mutation quirk users were the bane of existence and needed to die. She realizes the monsters they are when she told them about Mina and Suyu, all they did is yell at her and even smack her for being with, Phileth, they said. Though she was allowed to have an account that can cover her term in UA, she still has to find a place to live and food due to the government confiscating the family's wealth. As she leaves the police station, she sees her friends Mina and Suyu waiting outside for her. She thought her friends suspect that she was part of her parents' plot yet here they are walking and hugging her. This causes her to cry in happiness in knowing that they don't hate her. It is great to see you both. As all she can say is she cries and hugs in their arms. Hospital. 
No, this can't be happening. A yell can be heard from the room of Sir Nighteye. He has been told by his former sensei he has a prison life sentence and is being sent to the Tartarus, biggest prison in Japan. You can't be serious Toshinori. He yells with veins popping out of his face to the depowered number one hero as he is chained to his bed. That is enough Nighteye. You used to tell me that your family was from CRC but you rejected your family's beliefs. Now I find out you made a deranged plan to kill young Tagata and take one for all. Mirio explained to him his former sidekick's plan to hurt the mutation quirk users and make them villains. Sir Nighteye tries to deflect the blame. No that video is just fake. That rotten Ashido traitor created that video. You think I'll fall for that? That video is all around the country and now everyone in your hero office is confirming it. All Might counters with the disgrace hero widening his eyes. What? Those damn pieces of filth. I knew I should have just killed them and just say they were villains in disguise. I only put them in my office just to be meat shields. He shows his true nature to his former mentor. That is why I refused to make you my successor all those years ago. I always felt that you became a hero just to abuse other people and I just thought I was being paranoid but it turns out I was right. The one for all user says until continuing, repent for your sins in the prison. He says walking out of the room. No, get back here Yagi. I am supposed to be the one for all user. The one to kill all for one and be number one was me. The disgrace hero yells to the leaving blonde. As All Might leaves, he thinks to himself of his nemesis. All for one, why did you attack the Yaoyorozu mansion? That is not your MO as you are still injury and you took many quirks from the heroes. You usually study your targets and kidnap them. Gang Orca is in the ER as without his quirk his DNA is changing violently and Inasa is simply sleeping. He thinks to himself as he leaves the hospital to check UA. Izuku's lair. Within the hideout, one can find the second all for one user on his laptop studying his father's death. Hey Izu, how's it going honey? Mina says as she hugs him from behind, something that Izuku likes and returns with a key. My alien queen. First how did you tell your teachers about your disappearance? After all, to them you were kidnapped by all for one. The green-haired teen asks cause he was worried that they may think she's helping a villain and arrest her and he doesn't want the hideout to be exposed. I mostly told them that I woke up in an alley and technically that was the truth as after all you teleported me at one. The thing about the acid user is that she was always a gossip girl in school and so she knew how to tell a white lie. And you were right. Momo didn't know about her parents' plan and was saddened when she found out. She is living with Suyu now. But enough about me, tell me if you found anything about your father. Very well, I have found a lead about two heroes that were at the car crash. They seem to be partnering with each other for a while and so I can interrogate them faster. He says as he turns off his laptop to look at his girlfriend. But I can go after them later. Right now. You said you needed a tutor for your midterms right. She smiles at the chance for help from the one that she loves. They study Mina's work with Izuku helping her improve on her work. A month later, within Hosu City, the green-skinned kid is wearing a hoodie with jeans as to disguise himself. Hum, looks like Mina has been ranked in the top five in the midterms. Our study date really paid off. He says about a text he just got from his girlfriend. He puts his phone away and continues walking in the streets until he spots his targets. Excuse me, Kamui Woods and Mount Lady. He shouts as he runs to the duo. Shinji Nishia aka Kamui Woods, Quirk, Arbor. He wears a body suit that is attached to wood-like shoulder pads and a mask. He has been called a warrior of justice and is serious in his work. Yu Takayama aka Mount Lady, Quirk, Gigantification. She is wearing a purple skin tight suit that shows her curves. She is the opposite of her partner as she is vain and wishes to use her fame for money. What is it son? Want a autograph? Mount Lady, don't think of selling your signatures. Kamui asks with a kind voice but interrupts his partner's thought. Yeah here you go. Izuku gives the lady a piece of paper and says, put this for Izuku Midoriya. The very name stops the duo from moving and stares at him. He just twists his head and walks away and they follow him. The silence is oppressive for the three as the trio end up in an abandoned street. 
This street is the place where the crash that killed my father happened all those years ago. He says with a glare at the heroes. Look kid, we don't know what you are talking about. But we do know that you are that missing child that disappeared a year ago so come with us. The heroine tries to deflect this interrogation and walks to the kid to grab him. Quit lying, I know about you too. You both were at the car crash three years ago. There was a newspaper article that showed you two saving a baby from a drunk driver, the very same car that crashed into my father's vehicle. I want answers. Why did you both save that child? One of you could have grabbed the child and then the other could save my father. He yells with fury in his voice as the two look at each other and tell the truth of that day. Mount Lady. What we did on that day was something that disgusts me even now. Three years ago, a tragedy has just started. A drunk driver crashed into another car and while the drunk driver died from the impact as he didn't have a seatbelt, his baby son on the backseat is okay but needs to get out of the vehicle. Don't worry kid, we will save you, a younger Shinji shouts as he runs to the wreckage but you grabs his shoulder. Look, the car that got hit has a survivor I am going to get him. She says as he nods but, hold it, the two turn around to see the hero that they have been sidekicks to. Both of you go get the child. Their eyes widen at the order. That is a order, do it now and forget the other car. With no choice, they run away to the car and leaves the injured man to the flaming car. Kamui uses his wood quirk to rip off the car door and Mount Lady grabs the child from the other vehicle. As they run from both of the flaming cars, they hear the downed man mutter, Izuku. Inko. I. Love. You. Both. Quote. The explosions engulf the street, luckily the civilians were moved away and no got hurt except the poor father. The duo cannot believe they let someone die and they confronted the pro-hero. Why did you order us to leave him to die? We could have saved him and now a family has lost their member. Takayama yells but he doesn't have any guilt in his explanation. That man's quirk made him look like a reptile and saving him would barely be in the newspapers. Saving a baby will put you both on the local news. A hero is supposed to save everyone no matter what they look like. Shinji argues to his mentor. Oh please, that is your grandpa's heroes. It's not about saving people anymore. It's about endorsements, merchandise deals, and good publicity. Trust me, you will become pro heroes quicker this way. Flashback end. After that, we were on TV and were on the cover of newspaper. We became pro heroes faster compared to others but we regretted that action all those years ago. Kamui says as his best friend nods but it doesn't calm Izuku down, the story pisses him off more. You mean to tell me, that you kill my father and made my mother a widow, because you saw him as not worth saving? He shouts with angry. No, we hated that our mentor wanted to let him die. Mount Lady tries defend their actions. So where is the bastard? I couldn't find the name of your mentor in any records. Izu demands to the heroes. He bribed the government into saying he was not there. Said that would make us more popular but we would owe him a debt. The wooden hero explains as the lady continues, we can't tell you as you will kill him once you find him. You're damn right, he charges at the two and turning his right arm into diamonds. He tries to punch Kamui who dodges the attack and sends his wood tendrils that is destroyed with his air cannons through his left arm. I'll gladly beat the information out of you, you bast, he is interrupted as a giant foot hits him from the giant heroine. Then we will stop you here and now. Also explain how you have multiple quirks. You says with determination but adds as she lifts her foot to see the teen's skin has changed. Diamond body. He runs to the giant but is binded by wood but all he does is enhance his strength through power quirks to break the arbor bind. He rip offs his hoodie to reveal his green reptile skin body and the scales begins to grow. The man that you bastards left to die was Hisashi Midoriya, he was a dedicated father and husband that went around the world making sure his family would have food on the table. And you so called heroes kill him. His voice deepens and an aura surrounds him. Ah, with a roar louder than any beast his body begins to resemble a hybrid between a human and reptile. My father's quirk was dragon, it allows him to have the appearance of a dragon. This is the quirk of the man who killed. One of AFO's memories showed him stealing his father's quirk at the morgue. Man I am glad I made the old man suffer for his crimes. 
He doesn't stop at just this, he continues powering up using another power, this power came from the body of Brawley when I search his memories. His hair turns from a dark green to a lighter green with yellow tint. His muscles expanding and getting taller. This is the legendary Super Saiyan, Dragon Mode. This transformation changes a strong 6 feet 16 into a 7 feet 7 behemoth of a man. His movement shocks the duo pro heroes as he just disappears from view and then Kamui Wood is sent flying straight to a building with a hole on his chest. Shinji. Mount Lady holds her best friend on her giant hand as she picks him up. He was only able to see the teen for just a movement and saw him hitting him with a single punch. That strike broke most of his ribs and he puts wood on his wound to stop bleeding. Listen you, you are the only one that can stop him. He will go on a rampage if he doesn't find him. Shinji explains as he is put down by the giant heroine, hoping to give her a chance in the fight, he encases his partner in wood turning it into armor of sorts before falling unconscious. It makes her chuckle at the shape. Hee hee, it's shaped like the samurai armor we used to watch when we were little. Don't worry Shinji, I will stop him here and now as the giant wooden samurai. She stands tall as does Izuku, both stare at each other without any hesitation in their eyes. Let's go thought, he yells as they charge at each other. Meanwhile, a couple of blocks from the battle, a woman is jumping off the roofs of the buildings. She is dark skin with a muscular build. Her costume resembles a albino rabbit for she is the most popular heroine Mirko, the rabbit heroine. She is patrolling the city and hopes to find that hero killer, stain and beat him by herself. A huge explosion is seen however and sees that up incoming pro hero Mount Lady. That's a odd sight, a giant lady with wooden armor. But it looks like she is fighting someone could it be the hero killer. With that thought, she hops to the battle ready to fight anyone on the way. The battle is rough as every building is being destroyed with Wooden Mount Lady picking them up and trying to smack legendary Super Saiyan Izuku with them. His reflexes and flight allows him to dodge the debris and sends key blasts that are breaking her wooden armor. The giant lady knows that if she doesn't hit him, he could eventually destroy her armor and strike her. So she grabs him and slams him to a building that demolishes said building. Izuku tries to get up from while muttering. I swear that woman is a sadist. She loves smacking and stomping peep holy shish. Yu Takayama doesn't give Midoriya a chance to use his new powers as she stomps him where he stands and then perceives to pummel him with her fists. She stops and looks at him but under a crater, he just looks bored as he gets up and dusts himself off. Huh, well that was mildly entertaining but how about you just tell me where your mentor is and I'll be merciful. Izuku says with a smile that pisses off Mount Lady. No now give up or I keep smashing you. She yells but his smile just keeps growing. That sounds kinky. Shut it you purr. This coming from a giant lady that is wearing a skin tight suit. Hot meat kettle. Izuku messes with her. How about you go stroking off? That angers but also confuses her. Stroking. Stroking off what? Stroking off this dick. He exclaims as he points at his crotch. This tips the boiling point. That's it. She tries to punch him but he flies under her and as she turns around he clasps his hands together. Eat this. He fires a green sphere that hits her stomach which creates a explosion. It doesn't only destroy her armor, which was the only thing keeping her from the dying, it also destroys multiply blocks of the city. Looking at the down heroes, he power down and goes back to his normal size and look. There, now that you are down, you can tell me where is your former mentor or I'll just go to that building and beat it out of Kamui. He threatened to her as he heads to the only building that wasn't destroyed by a couple of blocks. Wait, don't hurt him. She begs to him even though she is injury, she can't stand the though of her best friend being torture. I'll tell you who he is and where he is now. Just don't hurt him. Deal. Later, cops check the wreckage where a huge battle has happened and searching for any survivors. Cop 1. Who caused this destruction? Cop 2. Sir I found Kamui Woods and Mount Lady. They found the duo and see the wood hero with a hole in his chest cover with wood while the giant heroine looks like she was caught in a explosions. On her is a piece of paper with writing on it. To anyone who found this thought. These morons thought they were hot shit but look at them now. Watch out for Ua. They are next. Love Izuku Midoriya.
Meanwhile, the all for one user is walking away but is breathing hard due to using the Super Saiyan. Damn it, I used too much energy during that fight. I can't teleport to go after that bastard hero. I should rest somewhere until I regain my strength. With that plan in mind, he gets as far away from the fight until. Stop right there. A shout he hears and looks behind him to see the rabbit hero, Mirko. I saw you running away from that explosion. Now talk who are you? I am just a passerby that ran away from that crazy fight. He tries to not arouse suspicion but doesn't work. I don't think so, you're coming with me. She grabs this shirtless teen by the shoulder but he grabs her arm and punches her in the stomach. She steps back and confirms her suspicion. You are Mirko, the fifth most powerful hero right? Hey, they say while All Might has his punches and power, you have your kicks and speed. If I take you down then that means I have a chance against him. Let's go little bunny. He yells with a smile and his arms turn into diamonds and charges at her. Gran Torino's house. Within the hero veteran's home, a young kid in a blue jumpsuit and armor is training his quirk. This is Izumi Kutra, All Might's successor and current one for all user. He is preparing another round of training until his and All Might's former mentor Gran Torino walks inside and sees him. Oh what's your name again young man? I am Izumi sir. He yells out. That's right the cat's little mascot. Anyway we are going to Hosu for patrol. He announces which Izumi realizes about the city as he is getting ready, that is where Yida is interning. I hope he is okay and not going after the hero killer for he did to his brother. I hope this is a simple patrol. Unknown to the intern, Torino gets a text from All Might that shocks him, I am going to Hosu. I believe all for one is there. Back in Hosu, Izuku is slammed into a wall by his opponent Mirko who is lowering her leg down after kicking him. What was it you said before kid? That you can beat me. She mocks him as he thinks of a way to win this fight. Shit, she is a problem. I need to find some way to beat her. I regain some energy to warp gate but she'll just hit me if I run. I got it. He has an idea but it will require her being distracted. He fires a air cannon but she dodges and kicks him but his skin is turned to diamond to soften the blows. He flies above her and prepares a kinetic powered air cannon however she jumps and bounces off the buildings and makes it to Izuku's height. Hair kick. With a hit as strong as All Might's Detroit smash, Izuku is sent straight down to a building and the force causes it to be destroyed with him in it. Landing on her feet, Mirko walks to wreckage and spots the attacker knock out. You're not the hero killer but you would do for now. She says as she is about to grab him until. Ah, she screams as her leg is in great pain. Looking down, her right leg is being grabbed on by the kid she thought is knockout and her skin is falling off. Nice try bunny girl but my decay quirk will make quick work of you. She tries to kick him off but her head is grab and slam to the floor. Oh now you show up Nomu as I was about to beat her. Alright you guys. Go and raise some hell and only attack heroes. No civilians you got me. Is the last she hears before she falls unconscious. Nearby at an alley, the hero killer Stain has just made short work of Tenya Iida, the brother of Ingenium, and is about to kill him and the hero native but he is hit by a blur and it looks like a kid. Kutra, stop and let me take revenge of him. Tenya yells but Izumi is not moving an inch. No way. You are my friend and what kind of hero I would be if I can't save you. TCH, more fakes coming for judgment. Stain says as he is about to charge at them but a flame blocks his way as he jumps back and sees the son of Endeavor, Shoto Todoroki standing beside his classmates. Izumi, try to be more specific when you give directions. I almost passed this alley until I heard fighting. Sorry Shoto but we can beat him together. He said as they prepare to save their classmate and native. But then they hear footsteps behind Stain. Whoa what's this? Looks like a bigger party than what I had planned. A shirtless stranger is walking at this fight and looks like he wants to get involved. Sir you must run. That is the hero killer. Izumi warns this stranger but something is telling him that this man is a bigger threat than Stain. So you are Stain and Izumi Kutra huh? Pleasure to meet all of you. Trust me when I say this. We were fated to face each other Izumi. I'm Izuku Midoriya bitches and you are all about to face the floor. He declares as a dark aura surrounds him. The silence is deafening as the students, 
Hero Killer, and Izuku stare each other. All waiting for the other to make a move, which Staina bilges by throwing his knives with Izumi uses one for all to dodge and Shoto uses ice to block the attack as Izu turns his body into diamonds which bounces off the knives. The all for one user then summons wind that destroys the ice and Stain dodges the attack by jumping over it and wields his sword and tries to hit Izumi, who jumps away from him. However he was nicked by the blade which was enough for Stain to lick the blood. The next second, Izumi falls to the ground unable to move. Shoto is confused that his classmate is laying on the floor but seems to be trying to get up. Izumi, what's wrong get up? I can't move. My body is limp. The one for all user explains as he can't move. Todoroki then summons his flames and though Stain dodges, Izuku is hit and his body is on fire. Ah shit. He rolls around putting the flames out. Nice try shithead. He is then attacked by the hero killer but he kicks his katana away and he grabs his throat. He is about to choke him but Stain kicks him in the stomach with his steel spike boot. He then grabs his foot but the two are hit by sizzling hot water. The pain burns as Izuku lets go and punches Stain. Damn. So this is what one for all did to Izumi. It superheats his water quirk into boiling water that is at least twice as painful as Mina's acid. Izuku thinks to himself and tries to get up but it as if he body has gone limp. He looks to see Stain licking his boot where he stab him. The one for all user then gets up which shocks his friends. Izumi you're back up. I don't understand Shoto. I am back up but Iida and the hero are still down. His quirk must have to do with blood. The kid comments as the duo prepares to take on the villain and anti-hero. Meanwhile the Nomus are attacking Hosu but just fighting the heroes. One of them is Manuel who is hitting them with water but is grabbed by the head and slammed to the ground. The Nomu holding him down then grabs his arm and is about to twist it, but is punched in the face and sent flying. Nomu and Manuel looks and sees the savior. All might. Have no fear young Manuel. I am here. The number one hero declares with a smile which turns to a frown once he sees the attackers. They don't seem to be human. Are these the creatures Hawks told us about? The creature roars and charges at the hero. They clash each other with all might grabs the Nomu's arm and Judo flips it to the ground. But the slam doesn't have an effect on it and claws his side, hitting his injured body. D damn it. I am at my limit. Then I must finish this in quick. With that thought, he sends a barrage of fist at his enemy who in kind punches as well. The speed of the opponents are equal but All Might begins going faster and his strikes are hitting true. Nomu tries to counterattack but as he tries to bite All Might's face off, but he grabs his beak and throws him in the air and prepares to finish him off as he falls above the number one hero. Allow me to show you monster. The spirit of a hero. Plus ultra. That punch sends Nomu flying straight to the sky. The number two hero Endeavor sees the fight and gets piss off as All Might has shown he can fight against a monster that he knew he couldn't beat. The flame hero decides to vent his angry once he sees another Nomu going after some small time heroes by charging at it and grabbing it by the face and lights it on fire. His flames get so hot, it turns blue and melts its face off. Damn you All Might, I wanted to show off my son and now he runs and you show me up again. Back at the alley. Izuku can feel his body again and gets up as Stain was distracted by trying to stab the hero interns as Tenya regains his control. He is about to rejoin the fight but he looks up and sees a Nomu sent flying like a space rocket. Is that a Nomu? Why is it flying? It is an anti-symbol of peace, it was supposed to take on All Might. I understand now, Kutra states as he takes a guess at the hero killer's quirk. Your quirk involves swallowing blood and it puts us in paralysis state. Please let's stop this violence. Hey, you are smart kid. Perhaps I will let you live due to your heroic spirit. Stain declares as he stalks the trio of heroes. Though he is paying attention to this unknown interloper, who seems to be looking up at something but refocuses on Stain as he runs at him with a diamond arm. Izumi grabs Tenya to calm him down as the hero killer and unknown fighter fight it out. Tenya, we have to work together to defeat them. I cannot. I must avenge my brother. Stain must pay for his crimes. Ieda says with conviction but Kutra disagrees. No, we are heroes. We don't fight for vengeance or revenge. Shoto creates a fire attack that strikes both Stain and Izuku though the later comments on it. Ah, 
I swear I am going to make you suffer for putting me on fire. Though he isn't scared and gives his friends a signal. Izumi, Tenya, strike now. The duo do that as Izuku punches Stain with his diamond fist and the said duo uses their powers with Tenya hitting him with his foot and Izumi with his fist. The all for one user grins as the vigilante falls to the ground and prepares a move. Hurricane Hell. The two buildings between the alleyway are being hit by a hurricane that appeared out of nowhere. As many heroes like All Might and Endeavor investigate as all the Nomus left are either destroyed or captured they see the man walking out of the rubble. Though they are paying attention to this unknown man, the four people that are being carried by him are. Two are under his shoulders and two are above them. He stares at the heroes and drops all of them. All Might's eyes widen because he knows the team, the one who he said cannot be a hero and his successor Kutra Izumi down. Young Kutra. The number one hero checks his successor for injuries. Though said teen ignores the heroes surrounding him and looks down on Stain who is trying to get back up but he kicks him down and puts his foot on Stain's chest. You want to know what's funny? We have a similar goal. To change this f asterisk 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 up society of heroes that wish for fame or to get laid and screw the little man but we are different in what that means. He stomps on his ribs causing him to cough up blood. You still want heroes but I however want to dismantle this shitty society. I don't think so asshole. A voice is heard as he is kick in the face but is protected by his diamond quirk. He looks to see someone that shocks him. What the hell Mirko? You came for another ass whopping. The bunny hero is looking worse for wear. Her left foot has lost its skin and forehead is gash open. She is not deter however. He's the little shit that did this to me. With that confirmation. The heroes charge at Izuku but decides to leave. He inhales some air and declares a power. Smoke scream. He exhales black smoke that hides him as he uses warp gate to escape. All Might tries to grab Izuku but is too late as the portal closes. Mirko finally falls to the ground due to her injuries. The number one hero looks down at his successor and injured hero and wonders. Why young Midoriya? Later at a hospital. A doctor with goggles looks at a patient's file and then said patient resting on his bed. I am sorry that we have no way to reattach your engines but we may be able to fix your spine after some surgery. He was about to continue until someone walks in. They look to see a shirtless teen that looks tired. Hey doctor, leave us alone. I'm sorry young man but this man is. Izuku holds up his hand. Okay stop with the bullshit. I know who you are Dr. Ujiko. The doctor raises his eyebrows and looks the kid in the eye and comes to a realization. Ah, I understand now. It is a pleasure to meet you second all for one. We should talk later. It is all he said as he walks out of the room and Izuku locks the door. He sits down and looks at the sole patient. I would say it is a pleasure to meet you but I want to kill you. Tell me Ingenium, do you remember Hisashi Midoriya? At an unknown office. The C ranked villain Jiren is looking at the news and looks at the headlines. Stain arrested and put in critical condition by unknown attacker. He has already been getting calls from his contacts to find information on the one that defeated Stain and one Izuku Midoriya matches the description. He wants him dealt with as well and has an idea. He grabs his phone and calls a contact. Dobby, get everyone you can. I found who took out your idol out. We are on our way is all the man says as he hangs up to get the others. Toga, Jiren wants to meet with us about Stain. Poor Stainy, I want to make that cutie suffer for hurting Stainy. Only I can do that. Hospital, the turbo hero can't believe that in front of him is this kid that says he is Hisashi Midoriya's son and he is pissed just looking at him. So you got to remember Hisashi or do you just forget the people you let die? Izuku questions the hero. No. Ingenium confess with a sad look. I remember him. The person I left to die. Izuku has a furious look. Then you better start answering my questions or I'm shoving your cast up your ass. First why did you leave him to die? The hero looks away, not wanting to answer but Izuku makes him by grabbing his arm cast and putting force on it. Ag. Talk or I'm turning you into a quadriplegic. Okay. The concept of a pro hero is gone. We don't save people anymore, just commercials and celebrity appearances is all we do. When Hisashi was trapped in his car, I didn't see a person just a casualty. I am sorry. 
That apology doesn't calm him down but pisses him off more. So he was not worth a damn to save. With his mutant quirk and reptile skin, he was seen as not worth saving. Former Ingenium confesses. The Ieda family always stay at the status quo. If there is a change in society then we adapt to it. Even now, mutant quirk users are still prejudiced and my family must do what it takes for the Ingenium name to survive. So that is it. You felt that because of his quirk that you wouldn't have gotten as much fame so you just saved that kid and let my dad die. Izuku surmises. Tensai looks at the kid and sees nothing but righteous fury. He knows what he did was wrong and he regrets doing it but for the Ieda name survive, he had to do sacrifices. That doesn't concern Izuku however as he grips his cast harder to the pain of the former hero. You only cared about the fame. You can talk about that you had to do it or it was for your family but we both know that you are just a celebrity with a super power. That is all you ever were. Don't think I don't know about Trigger. Ida's eyes widen at the reveal. Why you know? The fact you have been giving your agency sidekicks drugs to enhance their quirks and make your agency better. Yay I do know you little bitch. You know, I considered killing you. Just breaking your neck here and now. Izuku confesses but then begins to grin. But look at you now. Your arms are beyond repair and your spine is broken. Your pro hero career is over. I get nothing out of killing you so I have an idea to finally get rid of you. Later, within Dr. Ujiko's lab room, he is waiting for his podianal ally or enemy. The door opens and in comes Izuku Midoriya. Ah, good to see you young Midoriya. Please sit down we have much to discuss. I wonder did you kill him? Izuku sits on the couch in front of the doctor who is sitting on his chair. Relax doc, you don't have to hide any bodies. I dealt with him my way and trust me, he's going to wish I killed him. A nurse enters with a tea set and places it on the table. Thank you dearie. Please cancel all my appointments today and tell everyone to not disturb us. The nurse bows and walks out. Don't worry she is one of most trusted nurses and won't talk about you. He assures the all for one user as he turns on the TV to see the headline news. Unknown teen injuries hero killer stain and evades pro heroes. You are becoming quite well known. It is only a matter of time until they know your identity. Izuku however isn't concerned. I am not going to hide behind a mask anymore. The next time I show those douchebags, I will gladly show my face to the world. He narrows his eyes at the doctor. So you better talk. You must remember me. Of course, you are my patient for years now. If I am correct, the last checkup was two years ago. Make it ten years. You know, the last time was you telling me I was quirkless. Izu growls at him. Yes I lied. Ujiko confesses which instantly rewards him with Izuku grabbing him by his coat. Why? Why didn't you tell me about my quirk? How come it didn't activate? The doctor however doesn't seem scared. Your quirk was a weaker version of All for One and you must have been a late bloomer. If I am correct, All for One tried to give you a quirk correct. Izuku nods which makes him continues. So with that process, it activated and you grab hold of his quirk and stole it. It gave you the power to actually take it and so you became the next all for one. As for why, quirks that have a similar ability to all for one are to be detained and turned quirkless and I saw potential in you. I saw the next all for one, a legend they has no equals. Okay doc enough of Theki asterisk asterisk king and answer this. Midoriya calms down as he lets go of the doctor and sits down. Why try to create a next all for one user? According to the symbol of evil's memories, you were both old friends. Been by his side since he started being a villain. Interesting, you have all for one's memories. The doctor asks as Izuku nods. Must be a side affect of taking his quirk. As for why I do this, we had a goal. A belief that made us work together but over the years he has begun to care about only power. He stopped caring and eventually he just told me to shut up and make no moves. At that moment, I realize he just wanted to control Japan. He forgot our dream and I knew there must be a successor and Shigaraki was not a good choice. Maybe in a few years he would mature but he had the temper of a child and knew there had to be someone. Then you came and I saw potential so I hid your quirk and waited to see what would happen to and look at you now. You are the one that will complete my life's greatest work. 
Izuku cannot help but wonder what this goal is so he decides to play along for now. And what is this goal doc? Dr. Ujiko puts his glasses down and looks him straight in the eyes and asks him a question that will change both of their lives forever. Tell me child, have you heard of the quirk singularity theory? Midoriya's apartment. Inko Midoriya is watching the news and is shocked on the story and picture. A shirtless green-haired teen with blue pants. He is carrying four people out of a destroyed building. We have just got confirmation, the culprit has been identified as Izuku Midoriya. A 15-year-old teen that has been missing for a year and now he appears defeating hero killer Stain and three pro heroes. We will find out more after the break. Izuku's mother cannot help but cry tears of joy and sadness at the fact she now knows her missing baby boy is alive but seems to be fighting pro heroes. Izuku, please come back I miss you. Ding dong. Her doorbell rings and she quickly runs to her door hoping that it's Izuku. She opens the door and realizes that not only is it not her son, the people in front of her are not nice people. So you are the mother of the brat that hurt our idol. Hope you don't mind if we make ourselves at home. You. A. The class of 1A are enjoying their free time as in a few days, they are going on a camping trip Aizawa sensei said. Momo is a little nervous. I will admit, I have never gone camping. Mina however smiles at her. Don't worry Momo. She assures as she points to herself. This girl is going to teach you. Suyu stares at the pink skin student. You have been happier than usual and have been looking at your phone a lot. Do you have boyfriend? The cheery girl stays quiet and blushes. Why yeah we have been together for a while. Maybe you gals can meet him. However the girl talk is interrupted as Katsuki Bakugo slams he fists to the table which catches everyone off guard. Where is he? Bakugo what do you think you are doing? Attacking people during their private conversation. Tenya Iida demands as the explosion quirk user ignores the class president. You know where he is don't you raccoon eyes. Bakugo interrogates Mina, I know you would never date anyone other than Deku so you know where the f asterisk 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 he's been. Mina glares at the Katsuki, the two have never gotten along growing up. With Bakugo's bullying Izuku and her encouraging him to be confident. It didn't help when they made it to UA and became classmates but unlike before where he would have assert his dominance, he was more calm just not by much. Even if I did know, what would you do? Find him and hurt him like you always did. Katsuki tries to answer and yet he can't find words. He wants to see Deku again but for some reason it wasn't to show that he is better than him. Bakugo doesn't know what is this emotion but now all he wants is to find the missing Izuku. He opens his mouth but then Ajiro Kirishima runs inside the classroom like he has been spiriting around the school. He is holding his phone which is showing the news. Guys, you are not going to believe this. A woman has been taken hostage by a group of villains. Hospital, reporter. Yes folks, I am right by the house where Inko Midoriya, mother of Izuku, has been taken hostage by around eight villains known as the Vanguard Action Squad. Wait I can see their leader Dobby coming out of the house. He seems to be holding a megaphone. Dobby. This is a message to Izuku Midoriya. You injured hero killer Stain and now you are going to pay. Come to this house in two hours or your mother will die. Oh dear. Dr. Ujiko looks at the television and sees the news. I guess you're going to rescue you mother rig. He stops talking when he notices his guest isn't in sight, instead a giant hole on his wall showing the outside and he can hear screaming. Why 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 oh 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 you 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 b a a a a a a a a a s s s s s s s s s s Jesus, I can hear it from here. Let us see if you will agree to our partnership. The doctor comments as he sips his tea and presses his intercom. Nurse could you call someone to repair the hole on my wall that has appeared thank you. Midoriya apartment. Eight villains are inside the house, waiting for the person they hate or just looking to fight someone. Dobby quirk. Cremate. Hamiko toga quirk. Transform. Twice quirk. Double. Moonfish quirk. Blade tooth. Mustard quirk. Gas. Magna quirk. Magnetism. Mr. Compress quirk. Compress. Spinner quirk. Gecko. Every single person is watching for Izuku while Mustard is sitting down with a tied up Inko on the couch. Ma'am please be calm. We only want Izuku. Please don't hurt my son. 
Hurt me if you have just not my baby boy. Drools comes off the insane moonfish as he stares at the mother. Sounds fun. I want your skin. He begins walking toward the mother but Mustard gets between them. No moonfish. We need her intact for Izuku. T T T T A A A A R R R R D D D D D S S S. Shouting is heard as they look around for the source. Dobby is confused at the yelling. What the hell is da? Crash. The roof breaks as Izuku drops down with fury in his eyes. You sons of bitches are dead. Dobby gives them orders. Mustard grab Inko now. The masked villain runs to her but Izuku grabs her first. Get down mom. Hurricane hell. A large hurricane cuts through the house. Many of the villains jump out of windows to get away except Moonfish who gets caught in the hurricane and sent flying. The only ones left in the demolish house is the mother and son duo. Sorry about the house Mo. Inko ignores her son as she hugs him like a mama bear to her cubs. I don't care about the house Izuku. Only that you are here, safe and grown up. Thank you mom. Using the warp gate, a portal appears. Go through it mom and it will take you somewhere safe. I'll deal with these little shits. Though she is happy that her son is in front of her, she smacks him upside the head. Ow, what the hell? When you come back, I'm going to deal with that dirty mouth of yours and where you have been for a year young man. Inko warns her son which makes him sweat. More in fear of his mother than any villain or hero he comes across. Why yes mom, as all he says as she walks in but not before keying him on the cheek. Okay let's go. He raises his hand and fires a air cannon straight through the falling death row innate as he falls in front of Izuku. Your quirk seems good enough to use. Meanwhile at an unknown location, a person is watching the fight through a ball connected to a staff. This man has white hair, blue skin and robes. My, my, what an interesting mortal. He watches as Izuku jumps out of the destroyed building in front of everyone as Himiko and Spinner charge with their knives and swords. Himiko attacks with her knife but the all-for-one user dodges the strike as Spinner jumps to catch him off guard but Izuku grabs the lizard and throws him straight to the crazy girl. Twice creates a Dobby clone and the original and clone fire blue flames at their target. Izuku however isn't frightened as he stomps the ground and a wall of ice appear to block the flames. His teeth then grow and stab Magna in the arm. A power to steal others. Hum. The fight. How do you have Moonfish's quirk? Magna questions as she holds her wounded arm. Izuku's teeth goes back to his mouth. Let's just say your f asterisk 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 head when you go against me. They begins to feel drowsy as purple smoke surrounds the street. He looks around to search for the source. The shirtless teen looks around as the villain falls asleep. Bang. Acting quickly, Izuku grabs the giant magnet Big Sis Magna was holding and uses it to block a bullet. He then sees the shooter. His uniform seems to imply this kid is from middle school and a World War era mask with tanks attached to a backpack that he is wearing. What the hell is a middle schooler doing here? The masked kid points his revolver at the enemy though he seems to be shaking. Don't underestimate me due to my age. He is about to pull the trigger but then blue flames attack them both. Kid watch out. He moves in front of the kid to block the flames with his own body. They notice that Magna was hit by the flames and was incinerated as Izuku receives third degree burns. The middle schooler grabs his tanks and turns the nozzles and the gas disappears as he checks the man that rescue him. So that is your quirk. Izuku mumbles as he looks at his burned body. Stop talking. You need assistance. Mustard says as he pours water into his rescuer. What do you think you are doing Mustard? Dobby demands as he, his clone, Hamiko twice, and Spinner walked to him. Why are you helping him? Look he needs medical treatment. But why did you kill Magna and try to burn me? Mustard wants to know as he notices something. Wait where is Mr. Compress? Surprise. Compress appears behind Izuku and uses his quirk to put him in a marble. A magician must always shock the audience. The reporter Shinbin Kisha watches the fight and looks at the Kamara. Folks, Izuku has been defeated by the Vanguard Action Squad and now captured. Izuku, Deku, Mina and Katsuki shout together seeing their childhood friend capture by villains. Everyone is shocked at the violence of the fight from seeing someone on fire. 
Kutra walks in the classroom and sees everyone huddled together for a phone. Yaoyorozu san, what's going on? Someone was captured by villains. Mustard looks at the marble feeling grateful for the man that saved him and now afraid as Dobby stares at him. You ask why I killed Magna? If she couldn't dodge then she was weak and now I see another weakling that needs to be purged. That was the only warning he had as Himiko runs and stabs him to the side. The pain causes him to kneel as Spinner grabs his backpack and throws the tanks away. We know you are quirkless mustard. Those tanks weren't filled with oxygen but sleeping gas. Spinner explains as the kid is now frightened. He tries to lift his gun but twice takes his revolver and kicks him to the ground. So sorry for this. Twice said as his mood changes. Nah not really. This is how the world works brat. Dobby looks down at the revealed quirkless kid with a demented smile. We are above the heroes and trash like you should be thankful we don't wipe you out. But I am not so merciful right now. The weak die and the strong live. Oh, I want to see if he bleeds like everyone else. Hamiko cheerfully says as she prepares to stab Mustard again. The marble Izuku is trapped and begins to crack. And no, I can't die here. I wanted to show everyone that looked down at me that I can succeed. I just wanted to be something. He shouts as Himiko raises her knife. Mr. Compress notices his marble is breaking up and some weird energy is coming out of it. This is impossible. My quirk should not be breakable. Crack. Asterisk. Ah. A roar fiercer than a lion comes out as Izuku appears with lighter hair and yellow aura surrounding him. Congratulations you bullies. You just made me go Super Saiyan. Everyone is shocked and scared at his reappearance and power. They get more frightened as he disappears and no one sees him. They can't react as Izuku punches every villain except Mustard in the stomach, head, or neck. Dobby. G-H-H-K-K. Hamiko. Ka. Dobby's clone. What? As all he says is his head is destroyed. Twice. Oh no. Spinner. Herc. Mr. Compress. I am possible. Everyone falls to the ground unconscious defeated by Super Saiyan Izuku as his burn marks begin fading and healing. He looks at the wounded mustard and begins walking to him. The kid's eyes widen as this person that defeated some of the most dangerous villains in the country is approaching him. You want to finish me off as well? Hey don't worry kid, I'm here. He kneels down and his arm blows green and touches his knife wound. It hurts for a second but the wound begins healing. You know something? You remind me of myself, a bullied little shit that wants to show everyone who they screw with. Let me show you something awesome. The wound is gone using a healing quirk and then he walks to Dobby and puts his foot on the villain's head as his hand glows dark. You bastards talk a big game about how you are better than anyone and everyone. So I wonder if you still have that attitude without your quirks. The classroom is shocked at the result of the fight, a single person defeats a multitude of villains. Mina is happy that her boyfriend is safe and Katsuki can't believe that Deku has a quirk that seems to have surpassed his. Izumi meanwhile looks at the, the glowing hand and can't help but feel like he has seen it somewhere. Just like that his head begin feeling pain, as if it is getting smashed by a hammer. He can hear voices out of nowhere and wonder what they mean. Quote dot dot dot, brother's successor. Quote dot dot dot, stronger than him. Quote dot dot dot. Just like before, with everyone focus on the news, the youngest student walks out wanting to talk with All Might about the voice. Meanwhile Mina leaves unnoticed but one person. After stealing everyone's quirks, Izuku stands with Mustard who takes off his mask to show a white-haired kid with a look of admiration at the one who saved him. So what happens now Izuku-san? Now I want you to come with me. I want you to meet someone. Izuku says with a smile. He then looks at a building that survived the fighting. But first, hey news reporter Chan, get out here right now. Shinbin Kisha walks out with her cameraman behind her. We are walking out, just don't hurt us. He looks at the Kamara and makes a announcement. This is a declaration of war to heroes and UA. You all see yourselves as better than everyone because of your license and cosplay costumes. You're just villains with slightly better fashion sense. Well guess what? I can take your fancy quirks and will do that so come get me. He grabs Mustard and jumps to a warp gate. The unknown man watches the match and comes to a decision. 
This mortal may be the most interesting in centuries but first let's test him. A presence is behind him and someone he knows very well. There you are. I have found a new follower for you. Izuku's hideout. Welcome to my Casa di Midoriya. He shows the kid around his home and sees his mother Inko looking disappointed. Izuku do you live in this bar? Izuku begins to sweat trying to find a good answer. Uh, well about that. A second warp gate opens to show Mina holding something behind her back which gives the all for one user a way out. Oh look, it's Mina. Mina, it's fantastic to see you after so long. Inko hugs her future daughter-in-law. She returns it without dropping her item. Great to see you Midoriya-san. She walks to Izuku and keys his cheek. Hey Izu. I told you before, just call me Inko. What are you holding? She moves her hands to reveal a cake and the couple shout together, Happy Mother's Day. Oh thank you darlings. But who are you? She wonders who this kid is that helped kidnap her. Good to meet you ma'am, I am Mustard. I apologize for taking you hostage. He introduces himself but wonders what he is doing here. Izuku smile as he looks at everyone. We are here for the Mother's Day party and as for you Mustard. He puts his arm around his shoulder. You are now my protege. Let's party. Wait what? He tries to make him explain but he just drags him to the cake and gives him a slice of cake. This is mom's day of the year. We'll talk tomorrow. The four begin partying from eating cake and dancing with Izuku and Mina slow dancing and Inko teaching Mustard how to dance. And one and two and keep going. Inko instructs Mustard as he blushes due to her holding him. Hey remember we dance like this when we were kids. Mina remints their past as they hug together but then she changes the slow dance music into hip hop and break dancing. Let's do it for old time's sake. He is about to join in until his phone goes off. He checks to see a text message. Come to Dagoba Beach. What the hell is this? Izuku looks confused at the unknown number. He decides to check it out as he puts on a tank top. Hey guys, I'm going to check on something. I'll be back later. He creates a warp gate and jumps in and makes it to the beach. He can't help but see it is cleaner than he remembers. This place was a shithole with trash and junk. Guess people decided to clean it up. Unknown to him, the watcher is above a building observing him. Now let us see how strong you are to a real threat Izuku Midoriya. He walks around trying to find the caller until he spots someone. Hey, were you that asshole that texted me? Cause I was in the middle of song. He stops himself once he sees the person. Oh dear god what the hell is this? The weird looking person is red and fat with a derp face. He doesn't seem to be wearing anything except sneakers and boxing gloves. Tell me my brother, do you know Da Wei? Okay I'm not going to ask what the f asterisk 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 you are but you are going to tell me why you sent me that message. This person is not afraid at the threat. My name is Lick Elia and let me show the power. What? How do you even spell that shit? Wait the power. Power of what? Izuku asks many questions as energy comes out of Elia. What is this? This power is greater than any I felt before. Greater than Brawly. The power of EBBBB Bull Law. The beach is blowing up as the fight between Izuku and Ugandan Knuckles begins. The all for one user summons fire and tries to engulf the crazy person. EBBBB Bull Law. The shouting of Knuckles is heard as a giant key blast destroys the flames and head towards the green-haired anti-hero. Oh come on, as all he can say is is engulf in a ball of energy. The explosion can be seen from miles. The smoke dissipates to show Izuku with wounds on his body and a bloody gash on the head. He gets up and looks to see the derpy person. I am going to rip your stupid face off. Come my brother, let me show you the way. As all he says is he punches him in the face. Izuku turns his entire body into diamonds to block the fist and returns his own punch. They give each other a barrage of attacks as the attack is pushing the sand back and even the water. Their powers seem to be equals until the last punch from the Ugandan begins making cracks in Izuku's diamond armor. How the hell is this guy stronger than me? He thinks to himself as another punch creates more cracks. What the hell is going on? This is the power of Ebola and this my brother. Oh 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 h h h h h. Knuckles yells as he powers up and his fur and hair goes golden. This is Super Ebola. 
A giant key ball hits Izuku in the stomach and sends to him to the sky. Ah, screw you you Reta. The explosion can be seen over the beach from miles. Many people look up at amazement of firework-like blast. Two of them is Toshinori Yagi and Kutra Izumi who were talking earlier. A few minutes ago, All Might and his successor Izumi were walking and talking about the voices Izumi heard. Three voices. I will admit young Kutra. I have never heard voices in my life not even when I got one for all. But I did heard voices. One of them even said brothers quirk. They talk like they knew the person. The number one hero thinks about what he is saying and remembers the footage of Izuku again the vanguard action squad. Thar was definitely the aura of all for one, his greatest enemy but then why was Izuku using the quirk when he knows young Midoriya is quirkless? Could he be his successor and if so then what happened to the symbol of evil? For now you should be careful and watch for any voices in the future. If I were you, you should not tell anyone else. We wouldn't want anyone to think you're crazy right. All Might jokes to his student who nods with a smile. Asterisk BBOOOMM. Asterisk. An explosion is seen which makes Toshinori and Izumi want to investigate. Come young Kutra, we must see what was that explosion. He shouts as he transform into his muscle form. The youngest Ua student agrees and runs to the beach. However as they charge, they are unaware of something or rather someone is falling to the ground. Dagoba Beach Izuku can do nothing as he falls face first into the sand. The stomach has a deep hole but luckily it didn't go through. The wounds have got worse and his blood has blind his right eye. His body is trying to heal itself but it can't. No, the weakness. So your regeneration quirk has a weakness. A voice says as the all for one user moves his head to see a blue skinned man with white hair. You can't heal multiple wounds at once and so you need to focus on a certain point. He is correct as Izuku is focusing on his head to heal the gash wound which worsened when he fell to the ground. The blue angel like man walks to the downed Izuku and taps his staff on the injured mortal which begins to heal him. All of his wounds close and he regain his energy so he stands up rejuvenated. A pleasure to meet you mortal, you are quite interesting. Who the hell are you? Midoriya asks the unknown man who stands with Ugandan knuckles. I am angel, let us just say that I came for you Izuku. The unknown blue man announces to the shock of the human but then he starts get calm. Sorry but I have a girlfriend. He jokes which makes the angel borrow his brow. Okay mortal, I wish to challenge you to a fight. A fight, angel explains. That is correct. You see, you are the most interesting mortal I have seen in centuries. Your power to steal quirks in a super saiyan form that has surpassed many. This is my challenge. I will assemble 30 warriors from the universe and you will face one every day for a month. This announcement shocks Izuku. If Ugandan Knuckles is one of them then could there be someone stronger than the one that defeated him? And what happens if I win? I will give you three wishes if you survive the month but if you lose then I will give a single wish to the one that killed or beat you. The unknown being confesses which makes Izuku interested in this dare. You're on. I'll take on all of you. Angel smiles at the acceptance. Very well. We will meet once again in July. You will choose the battlefield and I'll even let you make the rules. However it must be one on one and the way to win is surrendering, unconscious, or death. Do you understand? You got it. You better be ready for those wishes and to keep my on July. The all for one user shouts to his challenger. Both of them walk away but he gives Knuckles a message. Hey Ugandan asshole. I'll get stronger so you better pray to your god cause it will be different. Da Queen has heard my prayers but let me ask you something. Do you know Da Wei? No I do not. Izuku shouts at this man that is annoying him. You will. Is all the Ugandan says as he and the angel walk through a portal that appears leaving only the quirk user in a destroyed beach. He realized that the pro heroes will investigate the explosion and decides to run away. All Might and Izumi makes it to the beach later and see a demolished beach. They look around and don't know what happened. The one thing they know at all is this was a battlefield that even the one for all users don't know if they would have survived. The all for one user walks away and thinks of the challenge. I need to get stronger if I'm going to defeat Ugandan Knuckles. There is a one solution. He thinks of a plan until something hits him in the head that exploded upon contact, luckily he use a diamond quirk too. 
He fells to the ground piss at something hitting him. Where the hell did that come from? Masagaki Elementary School. Ha ha that went far. A kid yells at his friend that fired a cannon from his mouth in a playground. They laugh together but the teacher tries to scold the children. Why you kids shouldn't use your quirk in recess? The teacher, Kamari Ikoma says but they ignore her. They run amok with no restraint. Masagaki Elementary is known for problem children that don't listen to adults and destructive quirks. Who fired that cannonball you brats? Izuku shouts as he enters the park. The kids look at this adult that appears angry but they don't care. Screw off adult. A kid yells as his friends join in. Screw off. Screw off. S sir I am so sorry. They are just playing please I'll make them stop. Ms. Ikoma tries to assure the enraged teen but he is not having it. If I haven't used my quirk then I would have had a concussion. These brats clearly deserve a lesson. A smug voice is heard. And you think you will do it. Don't be ridiculous we are superior in every way to you adults. A kid looks at him like an ant as if he is talking to an ant. Damn brat. Midoriya growls to the smug kid. His senses are telling him to move. Shit watch out. He grabs and pushes the teacher out of the way as a hula hoop of energy passes above them. They look to see one of them attacking them. Little brat who do you think you are? Are you alright teach? Why yes thank you but why would they do that? The teacher cannot believe that one of his students would attack her. Izuku gets up and prepares cause the kids are looking ready to attack. If I were you I run away teach. I'll deal with them. But what about you? Their quirks are greater than pro heroes. She asks as the children show no mercy in their eyes. He smiles at her as his arms turn to diamond. I'll be giving these brats a spanking they deserve. You rotten adults. We are better than you worthless hides. One of the kids shout as a ball creature appear by his side. Their aura shows nothing but malice. These brats are just like him. He closes his eyes as he remembers him. Deku. Maybe if you jump off a cliff then you'll get a quirk in the next life. He opens his eye and looks at the children. I will not let a bunch of future Bakugos bully people cause of their quirks and superiority complexes. These brats are future problems especially their quirks. Could this be that quirk singularity theory Dr. Ujiko told me about? Flashback. The quirk singularity. That is the theory that over generations, quirks combine to create more powerful quirks. Many of them may have the power to destroy the world itself. The one who made the thesis was declared crazy by the scientist community and was disgraced after publishing the theory. That is correct Mr. Midoriya. I made the thesis years ago but they wouldn't listen to me so they kicked me out. The only one that believed me was all for one but soon he wouldn't care about it. Izuku is interested about this but he want to ask the doctor. This is your dream, to stop the doomsday you envision. Indeed. The doctor looks at his tea and tells him his findings. Two years ago a massive earthquake appear in the US. It destroyed most of California and parts of Oregon and Nevada. Thousands were killed and millions became homeless and it was not nature that did it, it was a child that every time it screamed it would create quakes. The earthquake stopped because the baby unfortunately died in a collapsing building. So that made you afraid. That was when I realized the next generation of quirk users will be the doomsday generation. The ones that will destroy the world beyond anyone's control. It is not just creating earthquakes, what if a baby can release radiation or make volcanoes erupt? My dream is to one day create a quirk for the all for one to one day erase all quirks. A world without superpowers. Midoriya Izuku will you accept this dream? The doctor asks no begs him to help his dream create a world of quirkless. Present. Dr. Ujiko, you gave me time to think about this but now I have come to a decision. Izuku thinks to himself as he deactivates his diamond quirk and instead have his hands glow black. He looks at the children, future walking disasters. Do you brats know what happened to misbehaving kids? They get their toys taken away. Izuku's hideout. The party had ended as everyone was waiting for Izuku. Mustard cannot help but want to know about his new leader. So what can you tell me about Izuku-san? Oh Izu is kind and has always been there for me. Mina says with a cheer as Inko continues about her son. He has helped me whenever I had a heart as a single parent. Sometimes it's hard to tell which is the parent and child. 
Wow he sounds like a saint compared to the others I work with. Mustard thinks back to his former team that tried to kill him. Trust me, anyone is better than Dobby the fried chicken. A voice says entering the bar to reveal Izuku with his torn shirt and pants. They crowd him with hugs. Hey sorry mom that I skipped your important day but there was someone I had to meet. She smiles and pecks his forehead. You came back Izuku so that is the best Mother's Day gift you can give me. Hey of course Mrs. Midoriya you raise a real gentleman. Mina prays as she puts her arm around her boyfriend. He rolls his eyes as he creates a warp gate. As much as I would love to have you around Mina, you should head home. Mom I'm afraid you have to stay here cause those ba I mean jerks reap the house. Izuku says but stutters as his mother is giving him the stink eye for cursing then smiles. Of course that means we get to talk about what happened to you baby. Inko says to the embarrassment of the all for one user as Mina and Mustard laugh as the acid user walks in. Though Izuku looks at his protege with a feral look as the quirkless begins to sweat under that gaze as ball creatures surround him. I wouldn't laugh if I were you Mustard cuz we are going to train. The next day, you, A is having a field day, class 1A and B are going to a forest for train. Mina is backing up for the trip until she hears a shout. Hey raccoon eyes. She looks to see Katsuki glaring at her. What do you want Bakugo? I know. He says to the confusion of her. I know you see Deku. I saw you at the warehouse entering the same portal Deku went in when he saved his mother. She get ups and gets in his face. I thought I told you to stop calling him that and you know what so what if I know him. You going to tell the teachers. Izuku Midoriya is classified as AS rank villain and search for any clues about him since defeating Mirko, Stain, and Vanguard Action Squad. He looks at her and just walks away but not before telling her something. Tell him I'm coming for him. That I will beat him even if he has millions of quirks. His glare gets worse, or even if he takes mine. Izuku is sitting on his couch thinking of the challenge coming, a competition of 30 people from across the universe will come in two months. All of them will fight him for the chance at the reward, any wish they desire and what he desires is clear. An end to the quirk society. The very thought of his dream coming true is making him sweat. He shakes his head as he gets up, he knows if he wants to win he needs to train and get stronger to succeed. Izuku. He hears his mother look at him with a frightened look which makes him worried. Mom what's wrong? Are you okay? Do you need a drink? He mutters questions but she shakes her head. Are you really going to do this? Go against the heroes. She asks which explains her fear. She is scared that her son will go against the world and get hurt or even killed. And yet he shows no fear in his eyes, just determination to win. Growing up I felt worthless. Izuku admits to his mother to her shock. Quirkless were seen as just wastes of space, people that heroes wouldn't save unless it involves a paycheck. Izuku I didn't know you thought like that. Did I make you feel that too? She asks which makes the all for one user feel like crap for making his mother sad. He puts his hands on her shoulders and looks at her seriously. Don't ever think that, you were a badass mother. A single mother that had to raise a child when dad was murdered all by yourself. You were a real hero not like Endeavor who sees it as a competition or Mount Lady as a paying job. You were my idol not all might. He hugs his crying and proud mother who looks at him with tears in her eyes. Thank you Izuku, I want to give you something. She runs to her room and comes out with clothes. I always notice you come back with destroyed shirts and pants I made some for you that are stronger than other threads. Wanting to try them on, he runs to the bathroom to change and comes out a new man. A navy and olive military style biker jacket with an undershirt in with a pair of tight pants and jackboots. He looks at his mother with joy in his face. I love this, though, he holds up a ski mask and hands it to her. You're not going to disguise yourself. Inko asks her son who just shakes his head. I am not going to hide anymore. Everyone is going to know the name Izuku Midoriya. Mustard is in the back training and Mina is on a field trip. I need to make a statement to the heroes and I know just the place. God of Destruction Planet. A land of forest is within sight. The home of the G.O.D. and Angel is now being home to 30 others. 30 fighters all preparing to face and defeat Izuku. 
Angel walks in front of everyone which grabs everyone's attention. Welcome warriors. You are all here for one goal. Izuku Midoriya is your target and the prize for defeating him. One wish. This game will start in a month. Now you all have a choice. You can stay here to train for the next month or you can leave this planet and I'll teleport you to Earth to meet young Midoriya to gauge him yourself. Now any questions? One of them raises his hand. I heard that Izuku gets three wishes if he beats all of us. How come he gets that many and we get only one? He smiles at the greedy question. Now come on, he has to fight 30 people and you get to fight him once. I'm just being fair. Any more questions? The others got nothing and stayed silent. Very well. Come meet me later if you want to teleport to Earth. Everyone disperses either to train or talk to other participants but one of them stays and walks to Angel. Oh and what can I help you with young man? He seems hesitant but finds his courage to ask him something. Are you really an angel? His eyebrow is raised on that question. And what makes you think I am not one? I met the real angel before. Not only that but I can't find the god of destruction or supreme Kai. So either they are both away or you did something to them. This unknown blue skin began to snort and laugh. Haha, <laughs> my you are a smart young man. Earth. The bus holding class 1B is rolling around the highway. The class is being taken to a field trip and apparently they are going to meet pro heroes in class 1A. How come 1A gets a police escort and we get two cars? Nito Monoma shouts in the back. When Izuku declares war on UA and says they are his next target, a number of teachers become paranoid that the villain may attack so they are getting escorted to the forest. Though more cops were watching 1A than 1B which enraged the copy quirk user. The teacher Vlad King ignores his student and gets everyone's attention by standing. Listen up, while we are being escorted to the wild, wild cats, we cannot lose our guard. Be careful of Izuku because he is Japan's most wanted and may come after us. They nod and look out for each other. They sit on their seats talking amongst themselves wondering what they will be trained in when suddenly the car behind the bus is sent flying as if it was blown away. This shocks everyone as they look outside trying to find what attacked the police car. Setsuna Tokage shouts. Guys look up, it's Izuku. Izuku in his new outfit is flying above the bus and sends another air cannon to hit the front police car. It spins in the air and hits the bus. Vlad King yells at his students. Hang on. The bus goes out of control and falls off a cliff straight into the forest down below. The all for one user looks down at the smoking vehicle. Better hurry, they can run into the forest to hide. Down below, Class 1B drags themselves out of the destroyed bus. The students look around for Izuku and then see Kendo grabbing their teacher. They work together to get them out and notice once they lay down the pro hero that he is knocked out. What happened to Sensei? Kanoko asked with fear in her voice. Abara sits down to check on him. He didn't have enough time to put on a seatbelt and was standing. He must have hit his head when we crash. He seems to be just unconscious thankfully. Setsuna looks at her classmates and notices someone missing. Guys, where is Jirota? Ah, behind the bus, they hear screaming and realize who it is. Jirota, Tetsu Tetsu runs around the vehicle and sees his friend down and unconscious. He walks to him but Kendo warns the steel user. Tetsu, come back, the attacker may come after you next. The warning comes too late as someone grabs him by the back of the head and slams his face into the bus, creating a dent. His friends hear the struggle and run only to see someone drag Tetsu Tetsu deeper into the forest. No, Kendo yells enraged as she enlarges her hands and goes after them. She palm strikes the attacker making him let go of their classmate and friend. She didn't get a good look at him as he ran away though she did notice green hair and freckles and there's only one person that fits that description. Guys watch out, Izuku is here. Class 1B prepares themselves as they grab Tetsu Tetsu and Jirota though the latter is still knocked out, the former is getting up and activates his quirk which transforms his body into steel. You know, Izuku talks hidden in the forest. None of them can spot him. Quote dot dot dot, I won't hurt any of you. Just let me have your quirks and I'll even teleport you back to UA safely. Forget it, Nito shouts to the voice. We are heroes and we refuse to surrender what makes us ones. Such a shame, 
the forest goes up in blue flames. Then let's see if you can survive against my friends. Black ball creatures come out of the inflamed forest and attack the class. They separate class 1B and are forced to run away. Setsuna tries to warn everyone. Stay together. He wants to pick us off. Yui and Yosetsu run together as a black creature tries to bite them. Yosetsu touches it, fusing it to a tree. Yui looks at her classmate and friend. We need to find the others. Together we can overpower Izuku. Right. He agrees as they walk deeper and away from the flames. The duo searches for their friends and see Toguru held by his throat by Izuku. I should thank you little mantis. Your quirk will help me in the future. Just hope that it doesn't involve me eating my girlfriend. Release. A whisper catches his attention and is hit by a tree. Do it Yosetsu. Right Yui. Awase touches the tree which welds the tree on the attacker. Shit really. He shouts but he just laughs. This isn't the real me. Like that, he turns to mud. They stand side by side ready to defend their friend. The real Izuku is atop the tree right above his targets. Mantis razors appear on his elbows. Let's see if my clones will deal with the others. He jumps off the branch. Come get me steel bitch. Clone Izuku mocks Tetsu Tetsu who is chasing him while Kendo is behind him. Tetsu stop. He is tricking you. She tries to warn him but he ignores her. Get back here you bastard. You must be a sore loser huh? This pisses off the steel quirk user as he transforms and tries to punch him but he keeps dodging the attacks. You just beep. Tetsu. She shouts as the clone seems to glow, warning her of the danger. She runs and enlarge her fists to hold Tetsu. Self-destruct. Ten clones surround Abara and Harayu. Oh lord. Please give me the strength to slay this heathen and protect my friends. God's dead. We killed him. Oh you shouldn't have said that. Harayu warns as thorns instantly hit the clones from an enraged maiden of faith. Die heathen. Deus Vault. Pony, Juzo, Manga, and Kojira are unconscious with a clone Izuku over them and mud around them. That was close. You almost got me. Setsuna is carrying Kosei who has a fractured leg while she sends her eye to check the area. Come on big guy, we're almost there. Ah. She begins to feel pain and kneel down. Someone hit my eye. Four figures are watching them while one of them is holding Setsuna's eye. Nito and Kanoko stayed on the bus to protect their teacher and Jirota. We got you sensei. The mushroom girl assures Vlad King while Nito looks ahead. Class 1B will succeed. We will outclass 1A once we capture Japan's most wanted. Reiko is flying, searching for everyone and sees Sen running away. Where is he going? Shihai and Shota are being held by a mysterious figure who is demanding a question from them. Where is Izuku? I need to show him true life. To be continue, I hope you enjoyed this story. Also remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.